Good afternoon, everybody. Good evening to you. My name is Hung Shur. Today is Saturday, December 30th, here in the Gold Coast of Queensland. It is Friday uh, in California. I hope you're all well. Uh, hope the holidays have been kind to you. We've had a special circumstance here in the Gold Coast, which is uh, we have been totally cut off from power and the internet for, for six, going into six days now. And uh, maybe not until tomorrow will we be back online. We'll see with our fingers crossed. All will go well. Um, Hope you're enjoying better weather than we've had. We had a major storm on Christmas Day, which just knocked uh, over 100,000 people offline. And uh, it has been, uh, apparently the, the storm uh, hit so hard that they say the power grid had to be rebuilt from scratch, pretty much. So our corner of the Gold Coast is among the last thousand people to get reconnected, so, but, Due to the kindness of some volunteers here and faithful Buddhists, we've made our way uh, to their home to where the internet is back. And uh, so the Dharma wheel continues to turn and uh, lots of drama and excitement. So with that uh, in mind, and with that as the background for today's lecture, uh, I'm going to ring my handbell three times and invite Paul to kindly request Dharma. So if Paul can get ready, here we go. I will put up our Dharma request and I'll ring the bell three times and then ask Paul to request Dharma. So here we go. That's the first bow. There's our second bow. And the third bow. Okay, uh, Paul, if you'd like to request Dharma, please go ahead. Gong Ching Da De Sang King Wei Tsu Fa Hui Ji Yi Tie Chong Sheng Ching Zhuan Miao Fa Lun Jiao Dao Wo Men Ru He Liao Sheng Tuo Si Li Ku De Le Su Zheng Wu Sheng Will the Sangha with great virtue out of compassion for the sake of this assembling and all living beings please turn the wonderful Dharma will to teach us how to live suffering and attain bliss and end birth and death and quickly realize number. Namo Tasa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa Namo Tasa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa Homage to the Blessed Noble and Perfectly Enlightened One Homage to the Blessed Noble and Perfectly Enlightened One Namo Sadanto Suchedoye Olahudi Sammyao Sambutoshe Namo Sadanto Suchedoye Alahati Sammyao Sambutoshe 
无上甚深微妙法，百千万劫难遭遇。我今见闻得受持，愿皆如来真实意。Supreme and wondrous Dharma, subtle and profound, rarely is encountered even in billions of eons. But now we see and hear it and accept it reverently. May we truly understand the Buddha's actual meaning. Alrighty, Paul. Thank you for the Dharma request, and now is my chance to say thank you as well to all the Dharma friends whose efforts have allowed this lecture series to continue.、Um, we're here with uh, uh, Dr. Wang as our translator, Sam as our、uh, our sysop, putting us, making sure we're doing it all right, and we've, as I say, borrowed the home of a Dharma friend. We're using、uh, a modem provided by other folks, and、uh, we have a translation into Vietnamese by our Dharma friends. So lots of helping hands, lots of hearts that care about the Buddha Dharma, so we can continue this series.、Um, essentially, what we're doing is we're telling stories. This is a storytelling time, and I know、uh, I'm somebody who loves to listen to stories. So.、Uh, If you're all just kind of like me, with have a special、uh, kind of story listening muscles that we need to exercise. Well, this is the series for you because we have、uh, Master Shrinwa's、um, edited version of the life of Master Empty Cloud in story and picture form. So let's continue here with our protocols to get going. And we need to acknowledge the country. We respectfully acknowledge the Kumbumeri people of the Ugambi language region as traditional storytellers and custodians of the land where our monastery is located. We pay our respects to their elders, past, present, and emerging, and all First Nations people whose sovereignty was never ceded. Now, 就是说我们恭敬地承认 Ugambi 语族的。贡布马里人是我们寺院所在地的传统叙事和守护人。我们向过去、现代和未来的长者们致敬，并且向他们从未被放弃的主权的一个第一民族的原住民致敬。Okay, that's pretty much the last of the protocol, except the bell song. So let's put that together. There we go. All right. Ring the bell. Sing a song. The bell sound wide resound throughout a hundred million worlds. The Buddha's law is heard and spread all throughout the triple world. The wondrous sounds that everywhere fill the Dharma realm with peace. May those who hear it gain the strength to follow in faith the Buddha's path. For far, uh, 众生传三千界内，佛法扬万亿国中。共信其法界和平，利益报，他能获得。Good stuff. Okay. All right.、Uh, on your screen, you can see Namo Guan Shi Yin Pusa carved into rock. If you read from the right to the left, Namo Guan Shi Yin Pusa, which of course is the number one method for making for activating Guan Yin Bodhisattva's vows. Reciting the name,、uh, so this picture was sent to us by、uh, Cliff and the family who were in Putoshan just last week, and the,、uh, it's exciting to、uh, to see a view, a vista from Putoshan. Now,、um, yeah, thank you.、Uh, it's good to. <laughs> Very happy to hear you on the air again. It's nice to be on the air again.、Uh, back it in、uh, Gold Coast Dharma Realm, we're not on the air yet. We had to come out to Reedy Creek、uh, a 
because Benogan is still in the dark. But if those of you who would like to listen to Vietnamese translation of today's lecture, go to the chat box. You'll see the Zoom link there. Rugo Gowe Xiang Ting Yijong Liu Li de Putonghua de Fan Yi, Niman de Kongjiban, Tigur Ranti de Kongjiban de Yo Sha Jiao, Nido Kandao Interpretation, a Jokai, a Ting, a Jijong Putonghua de Fan Yi. Okay, anybody who would like to request Dharma next time, the way uh, Paul just did, there is a link in the chat box. So please do find it right there. Yeah. Okay, now, um, today's story. Mm. Today's story, there are two, and they are kind of miracle stories. They're stories that don't have a good scientific explanation. Um, and after we tell these two stories about the life of Master Empty Cloud, I have a story from the life of Master Xuanhua, which uh, from our, our, ter- our teacher, which uh, is equally marvelous, equally wonderful, and has the same, uh, the same uh, environment, it's from the same Buddhist world as these two stories. So to get going, first thing I'm going to do is um, take us to the Nianpu. Uh, The Nianpu, as people know... Oh, let's see, before we get started, I want to acknowledge our own country, our uh, internet virtual country, to say welcome to uh, both myself and the translator are here in Reedy Creek, uh, our Ho, our co-host, both at City of 10,000 Buddhas. Uh, Paul, the requester, was in Pinole, California. Let's see here. We have Vancouver, British Columbia. We've got Ukiah, California. Ben is here from Mudraba. Celeste is in Hong Kong. Connie's in, in uh, Sunnyvale. Uh, Cynthia's in Saratoga. Hi there, Cynthia. Glad you're here. Uh, Duke Levan's in Montreal. Uh, let's see. We have uh, Xiaoping in Beijing. And Guohong is in uh, Alameda. Let's see here. We have friends from Guangdong, San Jose. Uh, let's see. Jensen, I think, is probably still in Jakarta, Indonesia. Let's see. Malaysia, uh, San Jose, San Rafael, New York City, Singapore. St. Petersburg, Florida. Hi, Michael. Michael Lewis in Vancouver. Okay, Michael. Mesa, Arizona, Calgary, Canada. Let's see here. Suzanne is with us from Hong Kong. Uh, Sylvia's in Seattle. Let's see. We have Willie in Virginia. Uh, Miss Dung is in Vancouver. Okay. Wai Ying. Wai Ying doesn't tell us where she is. Maybe San Francisco. Kong Kong. Beijing. Bao Tou Shi. Okay. Inner Mongolia. Where else? Let's see. Harbin. Beijing. Hangzhou. Where else? Liaoning, mostly friends from Beijing, from uh, Dongbei. Shenzhen, that's in the other corner of China. Okay, let's switch over to places in China. Chaoyang, Zhejiang, Lanhai, Anhui, Suzhou, Haiyou, Shimadifang. Let's see, Baoji, Shanxi, Fujian, Quanzhou, Fujian. Uh, let's see here, Huainan Shi, okay. Uh, Hebei, Tangshan. Okay, uh, Zhang Jiakou Shi, Beijing, uh, Hayo Shim Dipang, Beijing, Shenzhen, Zhejiang, Nanjing, Nanhai, Hainan. <laughs> okay, where else here? Liaoning, Liaoning, Jinan, Shandong. Okay, good. Shanghai and Fenghuang Shan. Okay, I don't know where Fenghuang Shan is. Okay, good. Thank you, everybody, for indulging me. I like to uh, look around the world that way. Here's our stories today, right here. Um, Let me remind everybody what's going on. Uh, We're going to go first to the Nianpu. The Nianpu is right here. That's the autobiography of Master Empty Cloud. And he kept, uh, or at one point, he looked back on his life and wrote very terse uh, summary 
of what he did, what happened to him and things that he did. And, and uh, uh, because he lived 120 years long, so it's quite a thick book, even though it's written very tersely. So I have it here. We last heard that uh, he was in Putoshan already. He had left uh, Tiantai Shan. He was in Tiantai learning how to be a Dharma master. He knew how to be an ascetic. He could be a real cultivator out in the mountains, but he didn't know any Buddha Dharma. And a wise advisor, a true Shan Zhishi, uh, came right into his face and said, if you continue like this, it's a dead end. You can be an immortal and keep your stinking bag of skin alive for thousands of years, but to no, to no benefit to anyone. Rocks live longer than your, your body, even if you, live, if you keep, it, keep it alive, it's still, what's the point? However, if you can come back and study the Dharma, you can be a benefit to yourself and living beings. You can be wise and compassionate. So Master Empty Cloud uh, relied on his past vows, set aside the ego, because you think the, the self is still alive in the immortal that wants to live forever and be free. Yet there's still a me and a, a mine. There's still a lot birth and a death. If instead you choose to cultivate the way, you can completely transform the small self and pick up the tong ti dape, same body, great compassion, which is, of course, the Mahayana. He did. He was able to set aside selfish desire, even as, as sublime as that selfish desire can be. He still could put it down and pick up the, the great vehicle. So he did that. And then he left Tian Tai Shan and Guo Qing Si uh, after learning, listening to all the lectures, listening to all the sutras, learning how to sit Chan, learning the Tian Tai Jiao Guan, the contemplations of the Tian Tai school. And he set off for Puto Shan. Uh, traveling to get there, he went to Gao Min Si, listened to the Fa Hua Jing. Uh, he, let's see, uh, went to visit he did what's called Tsanfang, traveling around to listening to great monks. Spent the, um, heard the Amitabha Sutra, then got on the ferry and crossed over the South China Sea to Putaoshan. Now, here's where our story picks up. So it is now uh, the, he is now 36, 36 years old. And Zhu Puto Le Puto Si Puto Shi when he was there at Puto Shan, uh, let's see. Um, here's here's my plan. Um, we know that from the the Nian Pu the autobiography, Master Xuanhua, our Shifu took that autobiography and selected from it. 200 stories. Now, it's not the case that one year produced one story. Like today, one year produced two stories from Master Hua's selection. So that's why I wanted to show you what the, the Nian Pu has and then how Shifu picked from this two totally amazing stories. Ready? Here we go. Here's the, this is Chinese only. So I'm going to translate it as we go. The readers who can read Chinese, Okay? If you can read Chinese, you're way ahead here. So, as he was living in Putoshan, he is now a monk on a pilgrimage to Putoshan. He traveled to all the different monasteries. This was the this was October of that year, Chao Lai Yi Da Yu, a huge fish washed up on shore. Zai Qian Bu Sha Shang. He, uh, the fish beached itself uh, on thousand step beach and couldn't get off. Chang Shu Da Shu Zhang. He was maybe a hundred, over a hundred feet long. Think of how big 
you know, what do we have, Jaws? Anybody remember Steven Spielberg's film Jaws about the shark, uh, the great white shark? Here in Australia, we are very tuned in to large bodied creatures. In fact, uh, Sam and I went out on a boat several years back and did whale watching. So the biggest of whales are not really 100 feet long. So imagine how big this fish is. It says his eyes were as big as wash basins. Yuren Chiro. Local fishermen uh, killed the fish, cut it open, po chu liang zhi xiao mu chuan, and they found in the stomach of the fish it had eaten two small wooden boats. <laughs> so they, this fish is so big that it had already eaten small boats, gobbled them down. Yo fa qi quan chan dong wu. They found in the stomach of the fish uh, hair ornaments worn by women. So gulp, the fish had swallowed down some people. Yi yu qi gu zuo zhu dun. So the, the spine, the internal bone structure of the fish was so huge that it could be, you could use it for uh, uh, dong liang, what's, what's it called? It, rafters in a house. Qi da gu ke zuo dong liang. Right, the, the bones of the fish were so huge that you could use it to build structures on. Okay, that's one Story. Okay, stop. Story number two, Yo Da Chao Shi. When uh, Master Empty Cloud went down to another part of the island, and Putoshan is two islands. It's Putoloka and Luoche. Puto Luoche. Together is Putoloka. So it's two islands. He went down to the big tide part of the island, Yu Chao Yang Dong. There's a cave called uh, facing the sun, a tide that hits the sun, cave, and a dragon appeared. Whoop. Lin jia zuo jing guang si. The scales on the dragon were golden colored. Si zu quan shen jie xian. The four limbs of the dragon appeared. You could see the four feet of the dragon and its entire body appeared Wei Bu Jin Shou, but its head did not appear. Qi Wei Si Yu Wei, Qiu Nai, Qiu Zhi Nai Qi. Its tail was like a fish, and everybody saw it for a while, and then it disappeared. Okay, well, yeah, there you go. That's the Nian Pu account. What is, what did Shi Fu do? Shi Fu took that account and turned it into Dharma stories. Take a look. Yin wei shi guo ru shi. As is the cause, so is the effect. This is uh, the first year of the Guangxu rain period, age 36, 1875. Gong zai putuo bian guang si cha. Shi shi yue. Chao yong da yu. Liu qian, liu qian bu sha zhong. Chang Shu Shi Zhang, Yan Ru Pan, Yuren Ge Fu, Lu Xiao, Xiao Mu Zhou Liang Zhi, Ren Fa, Shi Wu Deng Ruo Gan, Gai Yu Gai Yi Heng Xing Hai Bin, Hai Ren Wei Yin, Shou Bao Wei Guo, Qin Bei Chao Qu, Huo Wei Long Wang, Shan Shou Shi Zhong. Whoa. On Puto Island, the master extensively visited monasteries and temples. During the 10th month of that year, the tide washed up a huge fish, which landed in the sand a thousand paces from the water's edge. It was hundreds of feet long. Its eyes were as large as wash basins. The fisherman cut open its belly and revealed two small wooden boats that the fish had swallowed. There were also a number of women's hair ornaments, among other personal effects, gulp. The fish used to terrorize the seacoast, harming all the creatures it met. As retribution for its misdeeds, it was washed ashore by the tide. 
Perhaps this was a gesture by the Dragon King to serve as a warning to would-be offenders. Look at Shifu's, so he says, Huo wei long wang zhan shou shi zhong. Zhan shou shi zhong. The Chinese phrase is cut off the head to show the masses. What is that? That's a Chinese uh, idiom, zhan shou shi zhong, meaning sometimes rulers, in order to subdue a potential evil doing, will make an example of somebody's bad behavior. So you pick one, cut off his head, put that head on a spike, and other people who might think of doing evil or doing giving you trouble, see the cut off head and go, uh, maybe not. So you make an example of a, of a wrongdoer to prevent further mis misbehavior. Shifu, now, notice the Nianpu didn't say that. Shifu talked to, Shifu was in Putoshan. And this part, Hai Yin, this is Gai Yu, so Gai Yu, Gai Yi, Heng Xing Hai, Bian Hai Ren Wu Yin. This phrase that the, this fish that was huge terrorized the people along the shore without any cause, that he had a bad temper. Shifu knew that part of the story, which was not mentioned in the, in the autobiography, because Shifu was there and knew the effects of having this fish, right? So Shifu said, ah, probably the dragon king beached the fish and wouldn't let him go back uh, as and so that people would recognize harming others uh, results in harm to you. Okay, so that was added by Master Hua who knew the context for the story. Here's the picture of the fish with the boats coming out of its stomach. Gulp. And here is the pilgrim, our, our teacher, here is the, uh, the crowd of people on Putoshan who have come to look inside the fish. Jin Qiang Ma Mai Fu Shang Ran Wu Gong Yu Yu Yo Miao Xuan Ru Shi Yin Guo Ru Shi Bao Tian Wang Hui Hui Shu Bu Pian with his horse feed and spear attributions, even the Buddha had to repay. Our Master Yun encountered a sea creature fraught with mystery. As is the cause, so is the effect. The universal net of karma, all embracing, impartially spreads forth. Okay, look what Shifu has done with this. He took the, the story of the beached fish and what they found in its stomach and because our teacher was there in, uh, on the spot and was able to talk to people who years before had been there when the fish landed, he knew he got the context. He got the, the uh, surrounding story behind the, uh, the beaching of this giant fish. And so he said, oh, chances are, so what do people say? They say, where'd the fish come from? Who is this fish? Oh, so the story comes out that this fish had been frightening the men and women who made their living by going out on the sea. This is, mind you, where are we? We're on Putoshan. I personally um, saw the, the men and women who came into Fa Yu Si in the morning what did they do? So I was there with my companions doing Zhao Ke. And we noticed, wow, here joining in with the Sangha at Zhao Ke was a number of people wearing yellow raincoats and rubber boots, black and orange rubber boots. You've seen the people who know the orange rubber boots that, that Chinese workers wear. Who were they? They were fisher people 
who go out in their boats to make a living every day and they pray to Guan Yin. <laughs> Never mind their killing, killing karma, they still ask Guan Yin for protection. They go in and they bow to Guan Yin, they go out in their boats and make their living, you know, every day in the ocean, the South China Sea. This fish had been giving them all kinds of trouble. They were terrified because this fish would show up, just like the shark in Jaws. People know the movie Jaws, right? And this fish would gobble them down. And when they opened the fish, sure enough, they found the result, the remains of people who'd been gobbled, right? People who were eaten. So Shurfu says, with the horse feed and spear retributions, what is this? The Jin Chang Ma Mai Fo Shang'an. Okay, story within a story. Cause and effect. What is the title of our of our lesson? It's in wei shi guo ru shi. Like the cause, so is the result. The Buddha, as the Buddha, he was the prince. He cultivated for six years. He woke up. He became the Buddha. You would think, oh, pretty good life, right? Should be. Well, unfortunately. The Buddha had a headache for three days as the Buddha. And he looked into the cause and effect and told his disciples how in the past he had lived in a, in a life long ago. He lived in a country that underwent a drought. And the, in this country there was a lake. And when the country was... Uh, affluent, when there was money and uh, there was food, nobody bothered the lake. They let it be. But because of hunger and because of thirst, the people finally went to the lake and started to drain it to get the creatures that were living there and to drink the water. The Buddha, who was a young man at the time, took a stick and hit a fish on the head to knock it out so they could eat it. He didn't kill the fish, but he still hurt it. Three t he knocked the fish three times. And the retribution for that is, as the Buddha, already the awakened, you know, Tathagata, the thus come one, he had a headache for three days. Furthermore, that's the first one, the Jin Qiang. The second one is Ma Mai, horse feed. What is horse feed retribution? The Buddha went out, uh, with his disciples to uh, on the invitation of a Brahmin who said, if you walk with your disciples to my part of India, I will take care of you for the summer. You can speak Dharma and we'll, I'll feed your monks. I'll make offerings. So the Buddha did and the Brahmin uh, reneged his promise. It was, uh, he didn't fulfill his offer and so here was the Buddha with 1,250 disciples, hungry. So what do you do when you're the teacher and it's your job to provide for your disciples and there's no food? It was in a place where there wasn't, you know, the food was not available. So there was a horse deal, a horse trader who saw the situation and really pitied all of these starving monks. So he said, oh, I will be happy to share my horse feed with you. So there was a time when the Buddha and his disciples had to eat like oats. <laughs> Let's have oats. What you got to go with the oats? How about some more oats? Oh, anything else? Yeah, we got oats. Okay. So for a few months of the summer, the Buddha had to subsist on horse feed and all his disciples too. So the Buddha looked into the causes and conditions, and what did he say? He said, oh, you know, in the past, he said, when I was a cultivator on what they call a ground of causation, I, was, I had a neighbor uh, who was also a cultivator, and I saw he was getting offerings, and I was jealous. So I told the donors, do not make offerings to him. He's got plenty of food is what the Buddha said. I, that was my mistake in cause and effect. Like hitting the fish on the head three times, 
resulted in my having a headache in this life. Likewise, because I diverted food that was going to an honest cultivator because I told a lie, in this life, the person who I cheated out of food was the Brahman who promised me food and then didn't deliver. So, ru shi yin, ru shi guo. As is the cause, so is the result. That's why I had to eat oats for an entire summer along with all my disciples. So, jin qiang ma mai fu shang ran. The Buddha is the same with his retributions. So, uh, Master Shurfu was saying, this fish, this giant fish, which huge, right? Uh, was terrorizing people without cause. Notice he says, Hai Rin Wei Yin, this is the cause. Guo Bao, uh, let's see, Shou Bao Wei Guo. Retribution is he gets stuck on the beach and then cut open by the fisher people. So our Master Yun encountered a sea creature fraught with mystery. Everybody's like, what is this huge fish? As is the cause, so is the effect in the universal net of karma, all embracing, impartially spreads out. Okay, that's half of the, the uh, Nianpu, right? We have a second story from one, one year. Here it is. He's still 36, still 1875. Chao Yandong, Qian Jinlong. Yu Da Chao Lai Shi, Yao Tian Bo Lang Zhong, Chao Yang Dong Qian, Lai Yi Long, Lin Jia Qin Se, Si Zu Quan Shen, Qi Wei Jie Jian, Wei Bu Jian Shou, Qi Wei Si Yu Wei, Si Yu Wei, Jiu Zhi Nai Mo, Qi Long Zhi Lai, Huo Zhi Da De Gao Sang Li Zhi, Okay. Moreover, just then, a golden scaled dragon rose out of the huge breakers that swell from the sea in front of Chaoyang Cave. Although its entire body, four legs, and fish like tail were visible, its head did not appear. After a while, its body submerged. Perhaps this dragon, sensing that a virtuous, eminent Sangha member had arrived, came out to welcome him. It could have been an immortal guardian spirit showing its respect and extending its protection. There's the picture. Okay, here we are at Putoshan. Here is a dragon claw and an arm. Here's the tail, no head. Here's a military officer. Here's a monk. Here's our pilgrim, Master Empty Cloud, Chao Yang Dong. Does it look like that? Well, not really, but you can get the impression. Okay, maybe our artist had not been to Putosha. There you are. There's the picture. An amazing, uh, mysterious event, miraculous miracle. So the verse says. Chao Yang Dong Qian, Qian Qin Long, Quan Shen Qin Se, Si Zu Qing, Wen Er Wei He Lai Xian Xian, Zhi Yuan Bi An You Zhi Ren. In front of Chao Yang Cave, he saw a golden dragon. Its entire body, golden hued, its four legs, plain to see. Why indeed, you ask, did this vision appear? only because a sage had come to the shore. Okay, so, uh, okay, let's see. One, five, three, cool, one, 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 cool. So this is uh, the story. Shurfu's verse, notice what he does with the facts. The the facts are what are reported in the Nianpu. So, Master Empty Cloud doesn't extract from them a lesson in particular, but Shrifu did, because what do you make of the, the, the sign, 
that is an auspicious sign that here's, here's a dragon. Whoa, dragons are, you know, when a dragon appears, it's got to mean something. They don't pop out every day. And who gets to see the dragon? Well, anybody who was there. That's the amazing thing. This is not just like somebody imagines it. The, uh, there were other people, the monks, business people, fishermen, military, all seeing this incredible creature appear. So dragons, there are all kinds of dragons. There are space traveling dragons. There are sky traveling dragons. There are earth traveling dragons and water traveling dragons. Dragons that live in all different environments. And in Buddhism, what's fascinating is the dragons are so common that they have names. We know their names. There are uh, many, many episodes in the Buddhist life of dragons interacting with people. Not only in Indian folklore, not only in Chinese stories, but in European stories as well. Dragons are part of the landscape. They become spiritual animals at some point, but historically we have St. George and the dragon, uh, an episode from European history. So, okay, dragons are ling chu, right? They're spiritual, ling shou, they're spiritual beings. Doesn't mean they don't exist. In this case, a dragon showed up. What do you make of it? Why? Why did the dragon show up? Shurfu gives us two possibilities, he said. Uh, could be because the dragon, well, because Master Empty Cloud was, the, uh, was there, and so the dragon himself emerged to be a hoof, a dharma protector, or it could be an immortal guardian spirit at Putoshan who was kind of waiting for sage. And when this eight-stage bodhisattva, who was, what, a 36-year-old man at this point, a relatively young monk, showed up, uh, the Dharma protector came out to greet him. That makes sense? Does that, people okay with that? All right. Well, you got to hear my story. So, uh, oh, let me share screen again. Here we are. So at one point, um, Master Shrinwa was invited to Hawaii to take part in a Buddhist academic conference at the uh, University of Hawaii on the Big Island, Oahu. And we uh, joined the conference, listened to the papers, met the scholars, traveled around. And of course, the, the lay people were just thrilled to have Master Hua there. And so uh, in, our, in our group, in our delegation, there was a nun who was said to have her five eyes open. And uh, I won't mention the name, but people maybe know. So the things that she saw, other people could kind of feel, but couldn't see in the detail that was visible to her. <coughs> so one afternoon, we took a tour. And we went to, I think it was Waimea Bay, I believe it's called. And Waimea Bay is very beautiful, multicolored bay. You The road goes up high because Hawaii is mountainous. And we, uh, we travel up the road, up high, and we got out of the bus, the tour bus, and went over to the lookout to look down over Waimea Bay. And 
the uh, the water is blue and green and coral and aquamarine and turquoise and crystal and just absolutely beautiful. And it's um, it's almost circular and there's a little outlet where it you go out the outlet uh, past the breakers into the ocean. And so we uh, we stopped and Master Hua uh, was sitting uh, went over and sat down on the uh, on a bench by the uh, the lookout point, and he didn't move. And so people were like, uh, "Okay, we've seen it. Can we keep? Can we move on?" And uh, <laughs> so the the, the sure who didn't move, and uh, the the nun who had the special vision was was sitting there watching. And the driver, the tour guide, uh, was like, um, is it okay that we stay here? Um, I'm happy to go anytime you're ready. And of course, he didn't want to, he, he was waiting for us to say, let's get back on the bus and keep traveling. So the bus driver was there and started to tell jokes. <laughs> and one of the jokes, he said, oh, here in Hawaii, he says, yeah, we got uh, multiracial, multicultural, multiethnic. He said, uh, but you can tell who lives here by uh, the, the yards outside their house. He said, uh, if you drive by, he said, yeah, we have a lot of Japanese here. We have a lot of Haoles, the white people, and we have a lot of Chinese here and a few Hawaiians. He said, you drive by outside. How do you know who lives inside? You look at the garden. He said, if you drive by and you see beautiful uh, pine and sand and rocks and water, you know the owner is probably Japanese. It's a meditation garden. He says, yeah, and if you could drive by the house outside, there's green lawn, you know who lives inside. It's probably a white person, Haole. He says, if you go by, you wanna know how you know it's a Chinese person living inside? They got vegetables outside. They're growing vegetables because they wanna eat them. So yeah, that's, how, that's Chinese. So we're going, oh, come on, guy, you know. Sure, oh, and so, we get back in the bus. Shifu un, unfolds his legs and stands up, and the uh, the 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 nun has got tears running down her face, and and so we get back on the bus and we say, "Why are you crying?" She said, "You all know what just happened." She said, "While Shifu was sitting there, out of Waimea Bay came hundreds and then thousands." And then tens of thousands of sea creatures. There were huge ones, spirits, and little ones, and tiny ones, and whole families of spirits. And they all came and knelt in front of Shurfu. And the oldest one was a turtle. And this turtle spirit said, we have been waiting to take refuge for thousands of years, finally we have someone here who we can take refuge with. And she said that they were, they must have been invisible to you, but she said there were sea creatures with, thousands, with hundreds of legs, with eight legs. There were octopuses. There were things that nobody has ever seen before. They all came out of the ocean and knelt in front of Master Shrinhua, and he made them uh, disciples. They all took the Dharma name Guo, he said. She said, so we're like, huh? And Shrifu said, yeah, Chabadola. He said, yeah, pretty much. And uh, then he, he asked, he, he said, what, what, did, what did they say? Apparently they were talking to the nun. So uh, she said, she told the story again, that they, they said that they had wanted to take refuge for so many thousands of years, but they didn't have anybody who they wanted to accept, but they followed the turtle, and that the turtle uh, came and took refuge. And uh, she said, and then after that, then the dragons arrived. And because they were already dragon disciples from Manchuria, they knew each other, so they, they, were, they had already taken refuge. But she said the dragons, when the dragons came, everybody else got very lao shi, she said. So, Okay, and she said, none of you could see that? And we're like, no, we were listening to jokes with the driver. <laughs> and 
So, you know. So, okay, two stories from the ocean around Putoshan, and then a story that I was present but didn't can't say I witnessed because I I had to hear it secondhand. But it happened in front of me in Hawaii at Waimea Bay, and uh, uh, Master Shrinhua, uh showed up, and the sea creatures uh, came out of the ocean to to take refuge with him. Okay, so I don't know what you do with that story, but that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. So um, Jensen has a question here. He says, "Wanfa jie kong yingo bu kong." He has heard a, a saying, the 10,000 dharmas are all empty, but cause and effect is not empty. What does that mean? So if we say um, the 10,000 dharmas, 10,000 dharmas, another way to say that is to say everything that our senses can see, everything that is sure, that is a fact, everything in the world, um, including our bodies, including the planet, the biggest of things, the smallest of things, all come together made up of other things, component parts. So water, for example, a molecule of water. I've got a teacup right here with some tea in it. That wet water that is tea is H2O, hydrogen two, oxygen one. Put those molecules together and you get water. Freeze it, you get ice. Boil it, you get steam. That's an example of one fa. It's made up of other things. So it keeps changing. And if you dry it, it evaporates. It goes away as water. But our bodies too, our bodies are these gadgets. Many, many trillions of microbes make up your body. Then when you die, when we die, they go away. So one fa, we see, you know, a uh, perfect example is we had a storm on Christmas Day that took out our electricity. And without electricity, guess what? No internet. Guess what? No washing machine. No electric lights. When the sun goes down, it's dark. Spent a couple nights in the dark until some kind-hearted people gave me a solar lantern to turn the light on at night. Okay, one fa jie kong. Yin guo bu kong. Cause and effect is not empty because it is not a shi. Cause and effect is not a thing, it's not an object, it's a principle, it's a li. And it's a, a principle that says every action has an equal and opposite reaction. Right? So Newtonian physics agrees with cause and effect. So it's not kong, it is that principle is true throughout all all kinds of shi, all kinds of things. So do good, get good results. Do harm, get harmful results. That's a li. That's a principle that is always true. All righty. So my goodness, um, we are in a, a difficult time um, where there's just lots of suffering, a lot, a lot in the world, lots of cool. Um, here is uh, an opportunity to, in two days, on January 1st, here is December 30th, so tomorrow is the 31st. On our January 1st, which is uh, De December 31st back in the US, we're going to be reciting the Sharangama Mantra Hopefully the, the electricity will be back on and we'll be able to uh, recite. People are welcome to recite on your own. If you go to gcdr.org.au, you can find more info. gcdrchinese.com also carries that information. If you're here in the area, Come on over in the morning and ring the bell, make a wish. This is the one, one of the two times in the year that we ring our big bell. Our neighbors are very grateful that we limit it to twice a year. So you can make a wish and ring our... This is a, a beautiful big bell with the Sharangama mantra 
on the outside. So that's, that's an opportunity. You don't have to wait to be invited to, to recite the Sharangama Mantra. You're welcome to do it any time and transfer the merit. Um, I want to do some advertising for myself tomorrow at 1.30 p.m. Australia time is 7.30 California time. We're going to be explaining the Ru Fa Jie Pi, the chapter on entering the Dharma realm or entering the realm of reality or merging with ultimate reality, Ru Fa Jie Pi. This is a piece of the Avatamsaka Sutra that is everybody's favorite because it's the story of a pilgrim, Sudhana. He's a young man who goes out to get enlightened. And who does he meet? Well, he meets, so far, uh, he hasn't appeared yet, but he's just about to meet Manjushri Bodhisattva right here. Wanshushri Pusa. Um, Manjushri Bodhisattva has just shown up. And uh, let's see now, I'm not sure anyways. There we are, yeah. And Manjushri is great wisdom. Da zhi hui. So Manjushri appeared to Shariputra, greatly wise disciple, and 6,000 young monks. And tomorrow in our lecture, we get to hear what happened to those 6,000 young monks when they saw Manjushri Bodhisattva. Amazing things happen when you encounter Manjushri. So tomorrow we get to find out what that is. It's uh, the one of the, the uh, I, when I first read that years and years ago, it stayed in my mind because it's a list of some of the most incredible things that you could hope for in cultivation all happen to these 6,000 young monks simply by beholding, by looking at Manjushri Bodhisattva. His virtue is so powerful. So tomorrow we get to hear about that. And again, it's 1.30 Australia time here in Eastern Australia. It's 7.30 p.m. in California. It will be 11.30 in China, Taiwan, Hong Kong, Singapore. So that's tomorrow. Uh, please do check it out. We'd love to have you join us. Um, those those lectures are they inspire me. I just love to investigate the Avatamsaka Sutra. So that's tomorrow. Meanwhile, let's dedicate merit right now. Send off our best wishes for folks around the world who are experiencing difficulty or misery because of where they live, because of not enough food or disease coming or uh, extremes of weather, whatever it might be, bombs dropping on their heads. So if we dedicate merit, we can uh, contribute in the right direction towards the ending of suffering. Can we end the suffering? Well, how does suffering end? Just lots of little prayers like ours. Okay, so let's make a wish. Here we go. Find reward. May all who sorrow 
leave their grief and pain. May this boundless light dispel the darkness of our endless night. Because our hearts are one, this world of pain turns into paradise. May all become compassionate and wise. May all become compassionate and wise. May all become compassionate and wise. And then, before we go, I'd like to invite everybody to bow to the Buddhas with me and gratitude again to all the many hands and hearts who put this lecture together. Here we go. First bow, second bow, third bow. Bow in respect to the Venerable Master. Third bow. Alrighty, that's going to do it for us for today. Thanks for joining and we'll see you all next week. Amitofo for more of Master Empty Clouds biography.